I know who I need the one inside of me. <laughs> hey, Salam Pagi, Pagaba, Pai Pai, Aho. Uh, that's Indonesian in case you're like, what is he talking about? <laughs> For good morning, how are you? Good, good, I hope. That's what I said. It ain't perfect Indonesian, but that's a shout out to the uh, Indonesian people that worked with me when I used to work at Whole Foods uh, for Amazon. And uh, hey man, much love. Uh, that's how I'm gonna be doing it. I'm gonna be trying to speak in different languages. I'm gonna learn little phrases and come back and hit you with the bop, bop, bop. Boy, that boy, cold with it, ain't it? Uh, but other than that, man, uh, welcome back to uh, La Vida with Doc Willis. We in episode two. It took me a while because I know y'all like, man, you man, you be taking to Doc, come on, man. You're a little slow, man. Let me alone, dog. I do this how I want to do it. <laughs> so anyway, man, uh, last episode we talked about watching um, the TV show Unidentified and watching the first episode. And then coming back and we're going to talk about that which we will do but first hey man we got to get into a little bit of something else right quick let's i want to i want to talk about another thought of mine right and why i and the the why i approach the subject the way i'm approaching it so um because there's like a lot of confusion with the way it's being approached back and forth because I, I feel like it's kind of deceptive. You got these people saying, oh, well, this percentage is not and this percentage is unidentified. And it's like, man, come on, man. Stick with the percentage that's that's unidentified. And it's just it just drives me crazy when you look up and you see these different articles and all this stuff. Like, for example, if you look at what's the one, uh, the Ukraine, for example, remember that? I posted it on Instagram on my page. I did rec I just recently deleted it because the scientific paper and the scientists there that claimed they were seeing tons of UFOs in the sky. A professor, a scientist, Avi Lowe, which you remember, Avi, check him out. He claimed, or he actually went and studied the same material that they had and used video, video surveillance and all that through you know through the satellite systems and come to a conclusion that hey man oh these are not ufos these are shrapnel or ch chinese drones and all this kind of stuff and i'm like jesus christ so then the top scientists or the the heads of the department for where the scientists come from they do their investigation and they go oh shoot you're right because they missed out on a couple patterns that they needed to study scientifically so it turns out that it wasn't UFOs, you know, whatever. We'll believe it when we believe it, buddy. <laughs> but anyway, but that's that's the case. And and that's what, what pisses me off. You know, you're like, why? Why this confusion, even amongst the scientists? It's like, this is a simple thing. We need like more clarity. That's why when I went to the, that's what I like about what Cory Booker said in the first UFO hearing. Remember him, Cory Booker? He was in the first, I don't know if you, ever, if you saw it, I'll play this clip and we'll watch it and listen to what Cory Booker had to say. And this is how I feel the same. I have the exact same sentiments. So let's listen to that right now. We're going to play that for you. I'm going to put on my little beat up headphones by Beast by Dre. <laughs> and we're going to get this cracked. All right. So let's go and look and see here. Okay. So here we go which play for you. The Listen. culture has changed. That those who report UAPs will be treated as witnesses, not as mm -hmm. coops. Thirdly, not you need to coops. show us, Congress, and the American public, whose imaginations you have captured. You are willing to follow the facts where they lead. You know, we fear sometimes that the DOD is focused more on emphasizing what it can explain not investigating see, what it can't. That's that C C C C man. That's exactly what I'm talking about. Like focus, guys. Focus. We're with you. The public is with you. 
but we can't follow you when you're ping ponging back and forth. Oh yeah, these are Chinese drones and these was, okay, you know that. You don't need to tell us that. Why is this in the media? Why is this in these articles? Why are we reading about this? It's like, what? And that's bad journalism. It's like, who cares? If drones, whatever they are, and you already identified and you know that they're, 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 they're terrestrial, meaning from this planet, but we all, come on, man. It's, <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's like, man, come on, just focus. Focus on what you need to focus on and we'll, we'll be right behind you and we're listening. But this back and forth, it, it's, it make you not want to pay no attention to it. And especially, I mean, from what I'm looking at, uh, it looks like it's going to come this way anyway. So that's going to be, that's going to be up front and center after a while anyway, if that's the case. And especially if, remember how I am said again? <laughs> yeah. If Diane is saying what he's saying is true, then they come in regardless. So they're going to reveal themselves regardless. So we want to continue to grow in the knowledge of what's going on so that we can at least don't get side get side swiped. Like, oh damn, aliens, where the fuck these motherfuckers come from? You, you know what I'm saying? Like at least we'd be like, if they come, we'd be like, yeah, we already knew. We we knew y'all was going to invade and kill us. We <laughs> I just play, man. Don't get all paranoid over you. <laughs> anyway. So that was that's my sentiments of it, man. I'm keeping it 100 on strictly what's unidentified that we don't truly know yet. Galactic Federation, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so let's go on, on into our next thing we're going to talk about here. We're going to talk about unidentified, the first episode. Whew. That was a... Uh, it was a great, great little warm up for you. And I'm a, I'm a, hey, I'm a preface this and tell you, hey man, listen, it's going to get a little redundant and boring. It's going to scare you. It's going to have you on a little bit of emotional roller coaster as you go through the episodes. But towards the end, it gets a little bit lighter. And I guarantee you, whew, that last episode, oh man, I got something f to reveal to y'all. But, Anyway, uh, so you you already know that Unidentified, the TV show, what is a show that was executive produced by I don't know why and how he really got involved. I mean, he's done interviews. If you want to look him up, Tom DeLong, he's been at it. He's, he was rigorous about getting to the political figures, the government figures, the military figures, and he made his way to the top to get information. So him, Luis Elizondo, right? Former director of the secret UFO program that was $22 million from like 2007 to 2012, I believe. And um, he is part of this show. Then, which is really big, Christopher K. Mellon. You remember Chris Mellon? Uh, he's uh, from the wealthy Mellon family. And then he also is, um, or was the f the former assistant deputy of the Secretary of Defense for Intelligence. So that's who Chris Chris is. He's a big man, and I got something to tell y'all after episode fourteen. Also regarding this guy, this guy is, uh, yeah, yeah. I'll let y'all know. So. In episode one, you found out all out, and then they talked to the pilots. And this was regarding the uh, the UFO they call the Tic Tac incident off of the Pacific Ocean dealing with the Nimitz and the Princeton. Uh, you saw that, you know, the pilots was doing their thing, and they had live testimony. They had testimony from former uh, commander pilot from the U.S. Nimitz Strike Force, David Fravor, and then this woman right here, a female pilot who was hiding her identity, and which I'm exposed to you today. Her name is Alex Dietrich, and here's her 
and David Fravor kicking back on 60 Minutes. So if you want to go watch that, go on YouTube, type in 60 Minutes, UFO, U.S. Navy, boom, you should be able to find that uh, particular uh, interview. And it's a great interview. Uh, they And that's her first time revealing her face. So it was amazing to see her. Uh, salutes to both of them. Like, like we say, you know, we, we love the military. We love the commercial air pilots. And we love any people who've been involved with this. And, and, and they really ha like, like had to hold it in, but now can express themselves truthfully. So God bless y'all. And this will keep moving forward. We know it will. And we're going to keep moving forward with the information and learning. Uh, so in the episodes you heard David describe the incident with the Tic Tac, how it was moving erratically. And what, if you really paid attention, there was the Tic Tac, but there also was something submerged underwater too. So actually it's two videos and that's an amazing thing. So I, the question for, for me would be, when people say, and which we talked about last week, remember I showed you how the triangle and the Navy triangle, remember that? You remember the triangle. Yeah, yeah, the triangle from Jeremy Corbell and then we got, I showed you how the patent and the docs from the Navy. You remember, Navy. All right, so that one, you saw that. And we were on, think, talking about US, it possibly being U.S. drones. Or for that matter, could it possibly even be foreign drones or something like that? Well, it's still a possibility. But the only problem I have is some of the sizes of these things. Now, remember the Tic Tac was, David said, was 40 feet. And they say it was an oblong Tic Tac with no flight surfaces that was visible to the eye. It just was just bumping around and then it shot up and then shot away in a matter of a second, like it was just gone. Amazing technology. But remember there was something in the water. She said the size of probably like, it looked like a 747 or something up under there. So what is that? That's what I'm talking about. So that's a 40 foot, but what was that, that in the water that possibly was about 200 feet? Because I believe that's what a 747 is, maybe a little bit longer, I forgot to Google the size. Don't be up there with Doc, you know, why you ain't get your information straight, man, fuck you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> anyway uh, so they said that one was 40, right? So now, David Fravor, he also was on Joe Rogan episode episode 1361 to be exact and you can watch a two-hour episode but if you want to fast forward up to about 59 minutes 57 minutes to about 59 minutes i think i believe and you can hear david talk about another incident in which he talks about that happened in the atlantic ocean that a helicopter pilot told him about so they dropped the they so to keep this short they test run uh they test different missiles out and stuff like that, and they drop them in the ocean and different things like that. And then when they they do when they when they when they drop, I mean they fly them or whatever. And when they fall in the ocean, they go take the helicopter and then they re go and recover. And in this particular incident, you're going to hear David Fravor describe to you what happened when they released the guy down to get the get the missile out of the water, and when it was bringing them back up. Holy shit. Let's watch this video right now. We're going to go to that and listen and what's going on. I'm about to put on my beat up beats by Dre again. How about <laughs> I want y'all. Hey, y'all, man. Hey, uh, roast me for these goddamn. <laughs> all this shit. Anyway. All right. So now we're going to go and check this out. See here. Okay. Let's listen. So he thinks, well, that was pretty weird. So he goes out, he says, not too long later, you know, a few okay. months later, he's out and he's picking up a torpedo. Everybody? So he says they got the, they hooked the diver up on the winch and they're lowering him in. And as he's looking down, he sees this big, massive, he Holy goes, it's not a submarine. Shit. He's seen submarines before. Once not you a see submarine. submarine. He can't confuse it with something else. Fuck. 
this big object, you know, kind of circularly says is coming up from the depths. And he starts screaming to, through the intercom system to tell him to pull the diver up. And the diver's like a few feet from the water. So they reverse the winch and the diver's thinking, what the hell's going on? And he's getting pulled up. And all of a sudden, uh, he said the Gross. torpedo just got sucked what down underwater. The fuck? And the object just descended back down into the depths. Come on, and man. And never recovered the, the torpedo. Jesus, Jesus And Christ. this happened I'm in the late that. Jesus 90s. <laughs> late, mid that to was... late 90s, I think it is. Whew. Scary as fuck. I'm with Joe on that Jesus, boy. That was, man. <laughs> man, hey. He said, large man, come up and just fucking suck the goddamn torpedo man shit, man, huh? Uh, that's a fancy-ass drone, if you ask me. Large mass? Come on, man. This is, this, this is like, come on, man. I don't, I don't think drones are this gigantic. This thing sounds like it's incredibly huge, right? It's, it's, it's mind-blowing. And then... Uh, there were other, like, there were other incidents that happened on those ships in, in one particular incident. Uh, I don't know if this is a hundred percent valid, but I'm going to say that it's valid based on this TV show only has eight episodes in, re in involving UFOs. However, they interviewed Fravor and, and some of the other pilots and people also to give it credibility, credibility, <laughs> credibility. Let me get a little sip of this Pinot. I think I need to sip up. Salud, motherfuckers. Um, it gives them, it, it lends it credibility. So, in this episode, the TV show is called Contact. It's on uh, the Discovery Channel, and it's the eighth episode and the name of it is holy grail witness and you'll see once again kevin thomas this former combat photographer for the u.s nimitz he was there and he tells his story and his story was just make it long make it short as possible he, he was out doing what they call dark out and he wasn't supposed to be out he got locked out outside of the Nimitz and everybody was on the inside. That's when the ship goes dark so enemies can't see them. They do different combat sequences and stuff like that uh, to train at night. And um, so they go went dark out and he said, okay, well, I'm going to sit back and I'm just going to wait until they open up in the morning and then I'm going to go in. But I was thinking, I was like, damn, what if a fucking storm would have came? <laughs> it would be outside. It would have fucking flipped and slid his ass right there into the goddamn water. This, <laughs> like, man, he lucky. He lucky he wasn't no fucking. But he said this night was a clear night. Clear as hell. So he said he was on the starboard side of the uh, of the Nimitz. Uh, I don't want I can't, I, don't, I forgot. I even took a, a fucking marine uh, na uh, marina class on this and got a, a license for that. And I don't forgot all this shit. But anyway, um, so he was on the starboard side of the uh, Nimitz. And he said he looked out and about 200 yards out, there was a black triangle. <laughs> Remember this document earlier? We just, <laughs> but he said this triangle he said it was sticking halfway out the water, facing like at a 45 degree angle. And he said it was black, shiny, and he said it was bigger than the Nimitz itself. And you know, the Nimitz is about 11, a little over 1100 feet. That motherfucker is super huge. And he said it was sitting there, and then he said it, he said it was about two minutes, and then it rose up, and then it just bang shot out, out straight out of space or whatever it just shot out of space i'm like what the fuck that's insane so if you watch that show you would probably look at it and be like man this shit ain't <laughs> this don't even sound like it's it could be real but like i said if you look up all and when you watch that show too the eight episodes in there and you google all the places and people they're talking to they 100 legit like it's like oh shit it's just like you know the uh the uh the unidentified show on the history channel contact is on the discovery channel 
Unidentified is on the History Channel. And they both have credible witnesses from military. I'm talking about powerful figures. You'll see, man, that kind of show contact. You're going to be like, what the fuck? There's one episode where they talk about where the UFO set off all the alarms for the uh, nuclear weapons in the bunkers, man. You got to hear what the dude say, man. That's That episode is dope, too. I think it's like episode two, but I, I don't want to be just throwing them out there. You need to just watch all eight if you want to check it out. Uh, or we could do this. We could watch Unidentified. When we get to for, episode 14, there's something else I want us to see after that. And then we'll go into contact if y'all want to. Everybody can get at me and let me know. And also, you know what? Let me know if y'all want to do like a a live, live Instagram live conversation about about this. Maybe I'll go on and answer some questions. I I've never done it before live, but I can learn it. It's simple. Uh, so anyway, so you would say, okay, if he's credible, okay, that's one guy. So you, that guy said it was bigger than the Nimitz. What else you got, Doc? Well. Glad you asked. How about the 1997 Phoenix Lights? Y'all remember this motherfucker. Now, there's plenty of footage to show you about that. And it's a documentary about it that actually won awards. Now, this particular situation in regards to UFO flying over the Arizona and Nevada border for two hours straight. Now, most people who saw it up close they said when it was when it it was silent and when it flew over their head, they said you couldn't even see the sky or anything. This thing was so massive, the most gigantic ship or that they've ever seen, right? Also, this guy right here, Fife Simington, former governor of Arizona, former US Air Force pilot. When the incident happened, in 97 it caused so much hysteria that he panicked he had a news conference they did a practical joke and and just wrote off the whole situation saying hey man we caught the alien and it was to quell the the, the hysteria of the people because he said it was it was too much and then in 2008 he came back did a video, I mean, did an interview with a CBS, I think, I can't even remember, but CBS, and uh, let's do this, man, let's go on ahead and play that video for you, now I gotta put back on a beat up headphone, <laughs> but let's go and look at this video, and check out what Fife had to say, and what he said is the size of this thing, also, one of the witnesses, when you go, if you go watch the 1997 Phoenix Lights documentary, one of the vic one of not victims, one of the <laughs> witnesses said that when it was over their head, what he saw, he said this thing was so huge, you could land a probably about forty B. I want to oh shit, I think he said B B forty bombers or B two bombers on one one side of the wing. I'm like God damn, and. They said this thing floated for two hours, and then there was a guy that was truck driving on the freeway said he got out of the freeway because he said he was close to some Air Force base over there, and he said all of a sudden two jets start scrambling it up towards it, and he said he guessed it probably intercepted maybe, and he said this thing took, took off at the same speed you've been hearing about, what you heard on about that. Remember we was talking about that, 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 24,000 miles per hour. Ain't no telling what it what that one was doing, but that's some similar speed. So this gigantic ship had the ability to fuck and take off. So Fife, we're gonna play that for you right now. We're gonna go on and get into that. And listen to this, man. This is some this is some good shit, man. Let's listen to it. Let's check it out. So we go here. We got Fife. Okay. Wow. Play. You know? How big? Listen. Bigger than anything I've ever seen in the sky. Like an aircraft carrier in the yeah, sky? Yeah, See? yeah, That, that was the like same that, as Kevin yeah. Thomas. And it, and it was hard to define because of the light. Fuck. In terms of the size, but it, but it was absolutely silent and had sort of eerie embedded lights. And, you know, so that's. Whoo, shit. See that? See what I'm saying? That shit is, man, that shit is, hey, man. 
He said, but he only saw it from a way further distance than everybody else. So he just was just estimating. He said, this thing was so big, man. I don't know. So my question to you is, is who the fuck you got a drone that goddamn big? Why would you need a drone that big? It makes no sense. That's a former pilot, U.S. Navy pilot telling you this. I, that guy, Kevin, is a former combat photographer that was on the Nimitz himself. David Fravers, 40 feet. What about that 7 size 747 big old thing in the water? What the fuck kind of drone is that? Man, y'all got to stop with this drone shit, man. It's, listen, if you're in denial and you're not looking up the information, don't speak. There's too many people speaking about this shit. Oh, the drones, drones, it's like, and, and they're not following like I am. See what I'm bringing you? I'm bringing you witnesses, people talking, incredible people. Not just no bullshit. I was upset that Fife lied like that. You know what I'm saying? Because you could say, well, he probably lied again. But the reason I, I, I showed him, because I wanted to uh, do a parallel uh, comparison to what Kevin Thomas said and what Fife said. It's equal. Both said the size of the Nimitz or bigger. I mean, bigger than the vinegar than the, the Nimitz, right? A gigantic ship, my guy. Well, right there, he didn't say bigger than the Nimitz. Five didn't, but he said when the guy asked him, you know, he just saw the shit. What am I doing? So this is ridiculous for everybody in this in, in this world or even in the United States to go, oh, them drones. It's like, man, what the fuck kind of drone is that? It's it's preposterous, man. Stop. So now, if those are U.S. drones and they're U.S. ships, then I would say, then we got a fucking problem if it was the United States. Why? Well, let's go to this Tucker Carlson, Carlson, Carson interview, Carlson interview with Tom Rogan from the Washington Examiner. And let's hear what they got to say. Here we go. Engineers, well, maybe these objects are Russian or Chinese, but your piece points out Russia and China have literally lost aircraft yeah. chasing okay. these things. So they're not Russian or Chinese. So we have a declassified right. British government document, which is a research document into UFOs that's I got the out a couple I of got times, the actually, that about four Soviet pilots, perhaps Russian pilots since, were lost in trying to engage these aircraft. Were killed. Were Does, killed. Doesn't Ooh, say how. Really? Doesn't say how. And I haven't been able to find out how. Uh, I did hear from someone, though, engaged was an appropriate term to use, so wow. that they were trying to oh, shoot were, these things down, was the implication. Okay, so was, if Russia, yeah. China, and the U.S. have all had this experience, then these are not. These are not. And, and, and I think that's a pretty exactly. clear assessment on the part of the military. These are not made well. by human beings. No. See? Well, yeah, I think that's a fair assessment based on the capabilities, especially with some of the aircraft that the Navy have seen in Man, recent years are, are manifesting, right? That that you have things that are going hundreds of knots under the water, anti-gravity, anti -gravity, instantaneous underwater. hypersonic acceleration. They call them... Uh, that you have uh, basically capability performance without jet propulsion. And I'll right? put up uh, a USO this definition This stuff is not you. stuff that China or Russia have anywhere near the capability well, of... Well, physics can explain. Wow. Exactly. So, so why is the Pentagon lying about this? They're why always lying, don't they? So long? No, I'm I mean, you know, that's, that's the golden question. <laughs> I think one reason is that they, a lot of people in the Pentagon fully don't yeah, understand what this is. I think they wink, come to wink. the conclusion it ain't from here. Yeah. But beyond that, they're some flummoxed. And you I think also, they have come to that conclusion? Uh oh, yes. what? Yes, yes, confidently. I, they uh, think this is what? extraterrestrial, just to be totally blunt about or it. Or extra dimensional, something extra, let's put it that way. It's not so from this world. Not, fr not from. Uh, <laughs> not from here. <laughs> There you go. Hey, they not from here, man. I'm like, oh, shit. Trying to tell you, man, this is, uh, this is crazy. Now, <laughs> uh, once again, the vehicles that go underwater, they call those, so you have UAPs, which is Unidentified Aer uh, Aer Aerial Phenomena, which was, which was formerly UFO Unidentified flying object, but you also have USOs. 
That is un unidentified submerged objects. So those are vehicles that can hit water and go underwater. They pop, pop, and all under, no friction, no nothing. Like you said, go hundreds of knots underwater. It's fucking, man, they catch them going five, 600 miles per hour, 1,000 underwater, easy, with no friction and no splash, no nothing. Can't even hear them underwater. It's crazy. So uh, like I say, though, I got the dock for you. Uh, we can go to that and we're going to read some of these docs. So let's go to the UK doc where it says that about them being shot down or being killed. So we can go to the UK doc first. So now you see it says archive right here. Sorry about that. Archives on November 9th of 2012. And it was, I believe, but declassified. I think declassified on December 7th of 2000, or this is when the Ministry of Defense for the UK received it. So when you go down to like page number nine, I believe it is. Keep going down. And you get to this part. Here it is. It says, uh, let's go to page right before that and read the first last sentence of that no 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 let's keep it where we were so we're going to go back to page nine and it says russian former soviet republics and chinese authorities have made a coordinated effort to understand the uap topic several aircraft have been destroyed and at least four pilots have been killed chasing ufo the importance of this topic has resulted in an appointment of astronauts and senior pilots, as well as senior scientists, to carry out investigations. Man, come on, man. And that's from the web archive of the National uh, UK Archive. I mean, the National Archives of the Government of UK. So, you know it's legit. Uh, now, was that was that uh because that says the year 2000 right that's when it says that that was happening when did this actually start though because we really don't have like a true start time when all this started however i do have a another document from the cia that we could take a look at and get a little bit of an earlier date Y'all ready? Let's go. Let's go into Google right quick. Okay. And then we're going to type in. What should we type? Oh, <laughs> we're going to type in CIA.gov, F O I A, and you enter. You're going to click on Freedom of Information Act electronic reading room then you're gonna go here to historical collections click that then you're gonna go down to all the way down scroll and then click on ufo fact or fiction whatever bullshit ass title why would they even name that and then we're gonna go down to the bottom you're gonna click last and then click page number 12 then scroll down, scroll down again. Sorry about this, but y'all gotta, y'all want to look for info, and I'm giving it to you. Don't, don't be calling me all the time. Now I can beam you the UK one because that's too much to go through to find that. But I can, if you want to, hit me up in my DMs, and we'll go from there. Okay, so now let's click the doc itself. Boom, we are in there. Okay, what we got? Okay, scroll down. Okay, so here we go. This was approved June of 1994. And it reads as follow from this point here. It says, the Soviet and Chinese specialists on anom anomalous phenomena 
have mapped out a program for investigating incidents that are already known and have also arranged to directly exchange video and photographic materials on new similar phenomena. So they had videos and photos back back in 94 for them. Why do we only now have them? That's because that's not true. And they, and, it's, and, the, and the CIA is telling us this. So this coincides with the UK doc, which was released in 2000. Remember when I was saying, when I posted the, the article about the, uh, out of the Southern China Post regarding that UFOs were increasing in their airspace then, so that happened in 2021, I believe, or 2020, I believe. So if you go back to this doc and you look again, let's go down, oops, let's go down, I went too far, and look right up under what we were already reading. It says, in the last few years, the number of cases of visual observations of UFOs has noticeably, noticeably increased there in China and Russia. Come on, man. They was increasing then. Now they, so if they increase in, in 2020, that means they increasing even more. You understand what I'm saying? So, hey man, it's, it's, it's something cracking and popping off. And I mean, we already know that, but we're pre progress, we progressing to something uh, or on the cusp of disclosure. And as they say, possibly meeting the Galactic Federation. Cause I don't, I don't know about you, but I don't, I don't want to get invaded. You know what I'm saying? I'm, just, I'm still trying to become a superstar stand-up, and I will. You watch. God willing. God willing. All right, but that's the end of a uh, conclusion for Doc with the Docs. I hope y'all enjoyed this first part of this episode. It was a good time. Hey, man. I'm out. We don't want to talk about finding love and uh, the power of love. Uh, it's hard, man. It's hard to find love. Like, I'm, I'm one of those men where when it comes to dating a woman, I'm, I'm one of those guys where, like, I have to be truthful. And I have to be, like, 100% connected you know, like feeling like, okay, I, we need to go forward with this. I'm not one of those guys that too many dudes, they pretend and, you know, I, I don't pretend. I try to make sure, Hey man, you know, put my, my desires out there and right away. Hey man, this is what it is. And whatever it is, whatever, you know, happens from there or transpires is it is what it is. But finding love is, is hard for a lot of people. And some of y'all kind of, kind of, kind of, angry about that but don't be man you know i'm in my 40s so i'm you know i i'm disappointed that i ain't never find a wife way back in my 20s 30s but it that's what life is you know i would rather be this way with no kids and not have been married divorced than to just get with a woman and then not have things work out and get with another it's too much i mean marriage marriage wise because i've had definitely a, a count anyway so it's, it's something else, man. And, you know, it, I think, like, for us as as people, when it comes to love, we I think we really need to, like, look at how powerful love is. And for me, I, there, I, there is a lot we can talk about this. We don't need to, I ain't fucking Dr. Phil. We don't need to go into all that. But I will express to you or, or show you something that I read in the Bible, a verse, couple of verses that made me realize how powerful, powerful just regular love is so imagine you know being with a couple so let's read a couple of those verses right uh and they are from uh from the bible now if you don't get mad i don't believe i don't need to believe to understand these two verses man so get your shit together you hear me get it together <laughs> all right so matthew saint matthew Chapter 5, verse 44. I'm reading these from the cue cards. Fuck, y'all. <laughs> Goes like this. Matthew, chapter 5, verse 44. 
But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Verse 46, for if you love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not the publicans do the same. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit. Translation, publicans means sinners or evil people. Do not evil people love each other. And that blew my mind when I really looked at that. I'm like, oh my God. Evil people do find love in each other. You ever seen like, remember Bonnie and Clyde? Two evil motherfuckers loving and robbing banks and killing people. Like what the, like, and then that type of shit, man, you'd be like, man, fuck this dog. I, I, I should be able to find somebody. Look, even remember this. I don't know if y'all remember this guy. Uh, Mika, Mikulov, <laughs> Mikulov. What is it? Fucking Mikulov. <laughs> oh, Mikhail Popko, Popkov. Popkov, Popkov, fuck, I don't even know how to say it, it's Russian, Google him, Mikhail Popkov, anyway, he killed 82 women, and dude was married with a daughter, now, I will say, <laughs> the reason, like a little bitch, he killed these women, is because he caught his wife, he found out his wife was cheating on him, and he didn't want to cause harm to his wife, so he went and just randomly chose women, I'm like, fucking... And this guy was married? I'm like, what? And originally, allegedly, when it, when it first happened, she didn't think that he was doing it. She stuck by his side. She was like, we've married 28 years. I love him. And I'm like, but you was getting that other dick, though. Don't be, <laughs> how, how deep is that love? You feel me? But, yeah, she stuck with him for a minute. And then after a while, it was like once he kind of, once he confessed to it, and then this motherfucker went out and then start showing them what bodies was. He was showing the bodies like he was showing off new cars. Yeah, I, I got that one over there. I did that. I got that one in uh, 1967. And those two over there, that was around that was around 68, 69. Those three came. That was a three for one right there. Yeah, I remember that. It's like, what the fuck? Uh, but yeah, man, he found love. So I'm like, if he can find love, so can you. Wasn't the greatest love, but... He was married with a wife. Shit, that's it. Everybody can find somebody, man. And I hope, man, like all of you who are single out there and you looking for love like myself, I hope one day you find that shit because it's, uh, you know, it's beautiful when you, when you see it. Uh, uh, I also even though this world is fucked up and I don't really want to bring children into this world, I still want to have at least two to three children if, if possible. So I know I'm going to have to go pretty young, but I ain't going like 28, 29, and ain't doc. In their 30s, and if they got a kid on their own already, you know, I'm just, you know, I'm just throwing it out there. I just do want uh, either one to three children. So that's something I want. Uh, and what made me think about that was when my mother died. Cause when my mother passed away, I was like, damn, man. I was like, I ain't giving, never gave her no grandkids and I'm out here by myself. And I was like, oh, fuck. <laughs> you know, chasing this comedy, focusing it, you know. And I've, I had like quite a few women out here, quite a few, quite a lot. But never worked out, never came to mount, to anything. So, um, but when my mother died, I was reading the Shakespeare sonnet and uh, it hit me. I, I, that's when I really was like, man, man, I gotta, I wanna have some children. And then, <laughs> you know, it's funny when you read Shakespeare, it's uh, actually Shakespeare sonnet number three. You know, his some of his stuff is so fucking like straight to the point and aggressive. You're like, fuck. <laughs> like, so sonnet three, it, I'm gonna read, I'm gonna read it and then I'm gonna break some of it down. So when I read it, don't be like, damn, he reading that horrible. I'm just trying to read this shit, all right? So let's go on and uh, read this right quick. So he says, and I'll put it up for you. I'll put it up for you big so you can see it too. So it says uh, here, sign it three. Look in thy glass and tell the face thou viewest. Now is the time that face should form another. 
whose fresh repair if from now thou not renewest thou doest beguile the world unbless some mother for where is she so fair whose uneared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry or who is he so fine will be the tomb of his self-love to stop prosperity thou art thy mother's glass and she in thee calls back the lovely april of her time so though through windows of thine age shall see despite of wrinkles this thy golden time but if thou live remember not to be die single and thy image dies with thee so <laughs> so what he's saying is is look at the mirror and behold your own face because it's time for you to bring that new genetic your new genetics to everybody to renew that's what he mean by renew us. He means to renew, bring a, a new you out, you know, because he says, you know, what are, what are you? What are you? Why would you? Why would you not want to have a baby? And then he goes, which is really funny here. He says, for where is she so fair whose uneared womb disdains the tillage of thy husbandry? <laughs> He's saying. <laughs> where is the woman <laughs> with the unplowed womb <laughs> disdains the tillage of thy husbandry man what the f he said he said what he, he said what he said you're not gonna plow that you got a plow that's waiting on you you ain't gonna plow that what is you doing <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get it in, <laughs> fucking, fucking Shakespeare, dude. He's something else. <laughs> but man, yeah, man. So it's like that. That touched me, man. You know, he and then he say, you know, like he said, it's it's yo. You know what you see in the glass is 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 the he calls it the April. It's just that he's describing the beauty of of your mother, the the moment she had you in and and how unfair it would be for you to 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 not witness this and he say you know it's something so great that you'll be able to look at them in your old age and your wrinkles and it'll be like like you say golden times it'll just be beautiful to you it'll be like man i did this and that that, that struck me you know i i felt i felt that now if you can't have children or something like that then i, I feel like if you adopt you can have like the same type of love or if you can't have children or y'all can't have children and the person you with has small children and you become their stepfather or stepmother, you also can love them and watch them grow too. So it's all love and it's all beautiful, but I want my image to walk in these streets. You know what I'm saying? Little Doc Willis's and they little Nikes. Hey, little bastards. You know, I want that. I want it, dog. So one day, God willing, I will have it. Um... But like he said, I don't want to die and not carry on my mother's legacy, leave my mother's legacy behind. So that's something important because I'm her only child. I I'm, I'm, was by myself, lonely kid. You ever, if you ever see me talking to myself sometimes out in the streets or you see me somewhere at a grocery store talking to myself, that's because I was the only child. I'm used to doing it and it feels good in my heart. Oh shit! <laughs> Man. But anyway, uh, so with that being said, I was so I'm I also write poetry, and I was inspired a lot by Shakespeare and a lot of different poets, from Pablo Neruda to Elizabeth Browning, you name it. And I mostly love love poems. I'm I'm like sickly about love poems. I don't know why. I just, I love love poems. Like a, like beautiful, like you'd be like, oh, that's beautiful. Like, man, it, it's more he has, but I ain't gonna read that. I'm gonna recite my shit. You know what I'm saying? And this goes out to all the fellas who found they, they love out there and anybody who find love out there, you know, this is dedicated to you. 
This is a poem I wrote. And now they used to have them all. Anyway, I'm going to go into all that. And this is a poem I wrote, like I say. And it's called Your Beauty is Forever. Your beauty is forever. Let me sit up a little bit and get a little bit comfortable for ya. And let's go. <clears throat> Entombed in my chest is your beauty's grave. For in my heart lies eternally your beauty stain. And my thoughts have conformed into your desires, slave, submitting to the caress of your lips without restraint. The tongue has power. Without it, words lose meaning. During a kiss, it gives a feeling when too softly touch. And as they lace warmly, our souls receive sexual healing and beautiful words are exchanged like I love you so much your tongue pierces deeply causing a sore in me bleeding feelings I've never felt before in me and my eyes are the windows to the core of me. Through the brightness of your smile shines more on me. Love is an illness and in my eyes you can see a sickness to keep loving you as long as God lets it be. And if I die old, stricken with love of thee, I'll forever cherish the moment. You let me pound the pee, pussy. <laughs> I'm sorry. Ladies, I'm sorry. I know you're like, oh, he's so, oh, he just, <laughs> he's so bad. <laughs> yes, I am. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, I just thought that would be funny. I just threw that in there. I, sh I shouldn't have ended it like that. <laughs> My bad. My bad. All right. I'm, I'm going to recite it. But originally how the ending goes, it goes, and if I die old, stricken, with love of thee, the image of thy beauty forever dies with me. There it is, you got it. Doc Willis dropping the poetry on you, another bombshell. Y'all like, oh, he can write poetry, do comedy, he's fucking in the science. That's my man right there, you got it. So fellas, like I say, you can dedicate that or or women to your to your husband, you know, they probably gonna be like, Man, eat him, why he say this? <laughs> hey man, it is what it is. I'm a comedian, so that's what it is. Uh and that would conclude the ending of this episode. Hope you like it. Of course you did. Get ready for episode three two years from now. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm> just, <laughs> no, I mean, I'll be dropping it as soon as I can. Like I say, they're trying to get the information and stuff like that and uh, the UFO stuff. If Hopefully I get it right before Christmas, maybe a week, week, uh, week and within the next first week of Christmas, maybe, or even maybe next week, just depending on how I can get my scheduling going. Um, but I definitely get that done for y'all. Um, y'all have a good night. And... 
take care. And I fucking didn't learn how to say, I forgot how to say, I learned it, but I forgot how to say goodnight in Indonesian. God damn it. <laughs> but Indonesia, you feel me. All right, I'm out. Yo sé que necesito el vino dentro de mí.